Are the Jets in on another wide receiver trade? Let's talk about it. No huddle. Wilson end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Elijah Moore. So I have to make another one of these videos and I have to talk about wide receivers again. And so let's just get right into it, right? More reports and more things keep coming out linking the New York Jets to a number one superstar wide receiver. Now, a lot of those reports are coming out and linking us to DK Metcalf because DK seems like the odd man out when it comes to wide receivers. Are the Seattle Seahawks going to pay him? Are they not going to pay him? He has incredible draft value. And so the Jets keep getting linked to DK. So let's talk about that. And I'm going to add two wide receivers that I would keep my eye on. Maybe, but probably not. These guys might get traded and we can talk about these guys. Fun fact, they're all out of the 2019 draft class. And you probably know who I'm talking about. So let's start with the DK trade. Let's talk upside, let's talk downsides, and let's talk why this may or may not happen. So let's start with the the bad side of all of this, right? One, DK is on an expiring deal, so that means that we're going to have to pay him next year. Now that can be considered a good or a bad thing, because that means that we can extend him um, for however long we want, and that we can have a really, really good wide receiver on our roster, but that's also like, DK is going to want wide receiver one money, and he definitely deserves it, and we he should get it. And it's the matter of just, are you comfortable paying $30 million for a wide receiver? Which is going to be like, it's going to be less than $30 million, but he's going to be in that $26, $27, $28 million receiver range because he's a wide receiver one. I'm all in on it. And I believe that this is a deal that the, the Jets should get done if they can, because you're not paying Zach right now. It's a good deal. It's a good move for the Jets to add DK. Now, Another bad thing is you can say maybe some of the character issues. He does sometimes come off kind of like a diva wide receiver, but how much of that was coming off of the back of being in Seattle and being blamed for not having offensive production, even though he was having offensive production and all of the drama and the stuff over the last two years that have been going on with Russell Wilson. Is he going to leave the team? Is he not going to leave the team? And then my other thing is, is how much of that is Pete Carroll's fault and how much of that is Pete Carroll letting that stuff go on? I think if he came to the Jets, I, I, I'm not too worried about the diva wide receiver things and I think that he would be coming in obviously we're changing our culture and trying to become a winning culture but I think the coaches and the staff wouldn't deal with any nonsense and I think that that would be one of the things that we would have a conversation with him beforehand the other and the worst thing about this whole situation is that DK's on Seattle and Seattle got fleeced by the Jets for the Jamal Adams trade so the question has to come back to is Seattle salty and mad that they got fleeced on the Jamal Adams trade and that they got a they traded two ones for a safety and then ended up paying that safety and now they don't have a team that they're going to win with are they going to be asking because it's the Jets for more capital in my perfect world I would like to trade for a wide receiver one in this league but not have to give up a first I would much rather be like Devontae Adams is off the board you know and Devontae would be the only wide receiver I would have felt comfortable giving a one to, but I didn't want to give him that contract, especially with him being 30. I look at DK and I look at some of these other guys. I would much rather give up our seconds and our thirds because we have two seconds really high in the top of the second that might be considered ones, you know, essentially. We have a pick in the third really high up in the third and it's pick 69, right? So like it's right up there and we've got these high picks in second and third rounds. I would much rather be able to get those guys in those areas uh, with that assets instead of giving up a four and a 10, um, one or the other, not both. I'm not giving both for a single wide receiver in the league. doesn't matter who you're talking about. But there, I want to talk about two other guys that might, might, maybe, probably not, but might, maybe be available on the market. Number one of the guy that's least likely, probably not available makes no sense for him to be available, is Debo Samuel, right? Uh, Debo Samuel, wide receiver, San Francisco. He's everything that you want out of a wide receiver in the LaFleur system that we're running, in the Shanahan system that we're running here in New York, right? It makes perfect sense 
for him to be the pick for the Jets if we're trading for somebody. What doesn't make sense is San Francisco trading him away. Now, you can make the argument that maybe San Francisco doesn't want to pay him. They're worried about the fact that uh, I think he's only, I don't think he's ever played in a full season in his entire career in the NFL. You know, he missed one game this this year. He missed like half of the season last year. He missed, I think, a game in his rookie year. You may have that kind of concern, but when you look at the offensive production that he provides and what he can do when he's in the game and when he's healthy, and the fact that they're not paying a quarterback right now, if they can successfully trade away Jimmy G, and even if they can't trade away Jimmy G, that by the time Debo's contract starts, Jimmy will be off of the roster. You're not paying Trey Lance for at least another four years. So it absolutely makes sense. You give Debo a four or three year deal, a bunch of money, you front load it so that on the back half where you're taking Trey Lance's fifth year option, you're not paying him. Like, it doesn't make sense for them to get rid of him because they're not in a cap crunch or a cap casualty mode. And they're in win now mode. I would even look at it and go, take the guy as an in-house rental, you know? You know you're going to lose him. Instead of trading him away for an asset, keep him in-house, play him, and see if you can win a Super Bowl with him. So... Debo, probably not coming to the Jets. Now, last guy that maybe is on the market and has heavy ties with the New York Jets is A.J. Brown. Now, when I say he has heavy ties with the New York Jets, I don't mean with any of the coaching staff or anything like that, but I mean the players that are already in the wide receiver room. And that's right, players. A lot of people, when they immediately think of A.J. Brown, they immediately think Elijah Moore, those guys are best friends. They talk to one another, like, daily. That's the connection. The other person that they keep on forgetting is Corey Davis was on the Tennessee Titans. Corey Davis essentially lost his job in Tennessee to A.J. Brown. Now, it would suck if A.J. followed Corey Davis and all that stuff. And I mean that for Corey Davis, not for the Jets. I'd, I'd love to have a good wide receiver room. There's a lot of connections there, and there's a lot of familiarity there in that wide receiver room. He's got his homies. He's got his friends in that room that he can hook up with and connect with and be like, teach me this system that they're probably already working out together in the off season. So it's a great look there. And the other thing is, is that AJ Brown is expected to get paid next year. My thing is, is does Tennessee want to pay AJ Brown? I would. I like AJ Brown. He's my favorite of the wide receivers that are available. Just when you look at like talent and upside and, and what he brings but my question comes down to, does A.J. want to stay in Tennessee? Tennessee's offense has ran through Derrick Henry. That's, that's, a, that's their whole offense. And so I look at that and I go, is that something that A.J. Brown maybe isn't a super fan of? Is that something that you look at and I go, maybe he wouldn't want to be in that situation? I think so. I would like to go to an offense where I'm going to be kind of highlighted a little bit more. I would like to be in that situation. Maybe the team that maybe wants to pay me more. He was underappreciated in Tennessee in a way that like, and I think that it's not because of his talent, but I think it's because of Derrick Henry is so dominant and Ryan Tannehill is getting up there in age. And I don't think that staff in Tennessee maybe trusts Tannehill's arm as much as we like to believe that they are. They went 12 and four and bumped out into the first round. And so... I don't know. AJ Brown seems a little bit of a stretch because it's just like they went 12 and 4 with him on the roster and they don't need to get rid of him. But the Jets are being rumored they are keeping track and they're keeping an eye on these wide receiver trades. I don't think that it's just a bunch of nonsense that's being thrown out there. I think that this is serious. I think that if one of these guys become available, I think we'll have the best package and the best offer to give. I don't think Green Bay or Kansas City, which are the other wide receiver needy teams, are going to have a good enough of an offer as the Jets because they have late first round picks and late seconds and thirds and fourths. Where the Jets, who may not offer a first, can offer you two high end seconds. 35 and 39 and 38, I'm sorry, might as well be first round picks. Again, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Guys, we are doing a giveaway on the channel. The link to that video will be in the description. Let me know what you guys think of the giveaway and what we can change about it. But 
Outside of that, go Jets.